recording is going. This is no it. No key This is it. It begins in three, two, one. Coming up on TMS. What food is this? Mud Lady wins. He just walked out. I think that's Clark. Steve Buscemi is well liked. Making things with Bill and not making things with jury duty, but, you know, he'll be here and more on this episode of The Morning Stream. <laughs> Maybe one of his pals will stop him from throwing that gas on the fire. No, no one said a word. Boy meets girl. A seemingly innocent relationship is born. <laughs> Now, all I have is a mission. This is the morning stream. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to TMS. It is the morning stream for Tuesday, December 7th, 4th, 4th, not the 7th. Fourth, <laughs> with wow, uh, way to jump the gun. Jeez. Yeah, kind of screwed that up. A few days, please. Screwed that up. Uh, there's Brian. There's me, and we're back. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Hi. Yeah, Hello. Yeah. yeah. Tuesdays are fun, right? They're okay. Always, always. Are they? Are they? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Sure. We may not have Brian Dunaway, but we've got Bill. We've got Jury. Yeah. You know. Yeah. This is true. There's good things that happen. There's stuff coming up. Don't you worry your little heads. They're going to have a good show. We promise you that. We've prepared some things. We've talked about them, discussed them. Uh, all is well. In fact, all is super well because I found... Okay, I'm torn on this. But okay. I think I found a, a favorite new local place. We were talking yesterday about we want to start pimping local places, you know? Giving yes, the locals some happy time. I mean, you know, let's 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 be honest. You and I both visit a lot of local restaurants, local fare. Yep. But when we talk about stuff on the show and we're saying, Hey, does anybody know any good places for nachos? We're kind of thinking like a place that somebody could recommend in Schenectady, New York, that also happens to have a, a location in Denver and or Salt Lake City. Yeah, we like to, you know, we were in, we have an international audience even. It's hard to even right. do that when we exactly. got people living in other yes. countries. So we do our best to do our duty. And uh, how's the rest of that go? I forgot. I, I didn't get my email. I don't know. I, you lost me a duty. Yeah, you, I always lose you a duty. Duty. So here's the, the, uh, here's the thing. There's this place that just opened up the road, a Hawaiian place, okay? Okay. It's supposed to be legit, like, really good Hawaiian food. And I thought, oh, well, that sounds all right. And they have this introductory uh, delivery deal where it's only a buck fifty. They'll deliver it to your to wherever you are. And Kim and I are like, well, we don't want to go out in the ice and snow. Why don't we just bring food in? Both kids were gone. <laughs> Let's let a teenager do it with our food. <laughs> yes. And Carter was, like, uh, with Nick, and they were downtown doing something, and they weren't home yet. So we were just like, yeah, we'll just eat. And um, so we ordered it, and we got it, and it was really good. It was basically, I had these beef, it was like, a, I don't know what, like little brisket strips and then some teriyaki chicken and some rice and some kind of weird macaroni thing with some kind of weird sauce on it and then some dipping stuff. But at the yep. end of it all, and it was really good. I loved it. I horked it down like it was no tomorrow. But I don't <laughs> actually know if I, if I ate Hawaiian food. Do you know what I mean? Well, the the macaroni thing for sure. Like that, um, it's almost like a macaroni salad. It's definitely not macaroni and cheese. It's like no. got a macaroni with kind of a kind of a cream sauce to it, right? Yeah, yeah, much more. It's a little tangy. It's not. It's not a. Uh, it's not cheesy at all. No, no, yes, no cheese right. in it. Did you have? Um, uh, did either of you have poke? I don't know what poke not is. Pokemon, not poke balls, uh, but poke. What's poke? Tell me about it. Um, that is usually a fish. Like a tuna that is marinated, almost like a ceviche, mm. um, but marinated with uh, um, vegetables and, and served with rice. None of that. I had rice, okay. but there was none okay. of that. Um, and it was, this was a complete, like, you know, one of the menu items was like, here is a menu item. And the menu item includes these, these things. And in this case, it was this big, and it was really good. Like the teriyaki chicken was amazing. The beef thing was amazing. The rice was perfectly cooked, and the macaroni thing was fantastic. Oh, and underneath they had a bunch of not le not lettuce. It was more like a uh, cabbage. Cabbage. Yes. There you go. Cabbage. Yeah, yes. it's like shredded yeah. cabbage down there. Yeah, you had you had Hawaiian food. <laughs> okay, so it was Hawaiian food then. <laughs> yeah, and really, I mean, uh, if a place says they're Hawaiian food, even if 
Well, no, I was going to say, as long as they're bringing the food and they're telling you it's Hawaiian, it might as well be Hawaiian food. I mean, it's... <laughs> All right. I mean, there are specific things like the macaroni salad you described for sure, the kind of the cabbage at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, there's like a... Uh, kind of the teriyaki you're describing, but like a chicken strips kind of thing mm -hmm. that I remember uh, seeing everywhere in Hawaii. Spam, uh, spam, very popular there. If you, I don't think you probably didn't have any spam, but no, but it was on the menu. Um, they did have that on there. Yeah, Some that's that's that food. sounds very much Hawaiian. All right, so I ate something somewhat in the vein of traditional Hawaiian cuisine, sort of. Sure. Right. Sure. sure. Probably American, not Americanized, but. Utahized a little bit. This place was is, is was founded and created by actual Polynesian folks who came uh, and made and set the place up and uh, are going for authenticity, as far as I know. But it just hit me as I'm eating it, going, I don't know if I've really ever had. I haven't been to Hawaii, so I don't know. And I've never sure. had. My wife has, and she she got something that she'd never tried before, and I forgot what she got. But uh, it just at the end of it all, I was like, I think that was Hawaiian. I don't know. I know it was good. That's yeah. all I know. I mean, Hawaiian is uh, kind of an amalgamation of Polynesian and Asian cuisines and mm -hmm. and stuff that uh, wasn't that. I mean, the, I think the spam is just stuff that that um, soldiers brought, like you know the yeah the, uh, the military brought over. It's like all right, spam because it's cheap and uh, <laughs> yeah. So they got like got the teriyaki is very Japanese and the. The, right. the the rice is you know very Asian influence, and then you got you know local weird stuff like poi and all mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. it's a it's an interesting amalgamation of various food types. But this place is apparently like decked out too. Like if we go in there, it's all you know super themed. And I'm sure know. there's a tiki or two on yeah. the wall. Some some uh, beads, some torches, some yep. uh, coconut lays. Bra. Yeah, give me yeah. a laid yeah, while we go. Bra, there. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm excited. They do it like TGI Fridays. They just hang coconut bras all over the walls. It's great. We used to have the weirdest Hawaiian place here in, not in Arvada, but Applewood. And it was a Hawaiian restaurant that was in a furniture consignment store. So, like, people could bring in their their couch that they wanted to sell. Yeah. And then also get a, a plate of, uh, you know, Spam Masubi or, or uh, um this macaroni. I know exactly the mac macaroni thing you're describing, but it was the weirdest combination of things mm. i could eat a whole nother big plate of it right now it was so good yeah just oh, talking sure. about it. it was fantastic so i recommend it it was also only 750 for this huge amount of food tons of food i don't know how they're gonna make money there maybe they will and, uh, and uh, i don't know how it works but uh it was, oh, it was that's how they get you the first one's cheap <clears throat> that's right first one's cheap really cheap delivery uh, thing next time it'll be 20 and a delivery price of five bucks <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, right. Caribbean food that uh, also has macaroni cool. salads is Jackalope Ashley. Is that true? <laughs> Never had a good Caribbean uh, dish as far as Caribbean I meal. <laughs> 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 it's, it's the same as most other meals. <laughs> <laughs> Who uh, sings that? Who? Billy, Billy Ocean? Ocean. Billy Ocean. Yes. Billy Ocean yeah. Bill, that's one of uh, Billy Ocean's uh, three number one songs that had eight words in the title. Shut up. Hold on. Get out of my dreams. Get into my car. Is that one? Um, of them? I think so. The get out of my dreams. Get into my car. Yes, that is one of them. Okay, and then that one. Right, which is the full title is uh, uh, Caribbean Queen parentheses No More Love on the Run. <laughs> Wait, did we say idle? We meant ocean. We didn't say idle. Chat room says we said idle. Did I say idle? Well, I'm, they, I did mean I did mean ocean. Did yeah, I say idle? I thought we said ocean, both of us. I could have sworn we said uh, ocean as well. Yeah, really ocean. Or maybe they're just goofing around. But anyway, uh, uh, and then the third. What's the third one? I can't. The third one is there will be sad songs to make you cry. I don't know that one. I don't think. Or I probably do. I just don't. I can't. There'll be sad songs to make you cry. Oh, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And these all went to number one? Be, Every number one on all three of these? They all went to number one. And a lot of people say, well, what about when the going gets tough, the tough get going oh, from, right. uh, the, uh, from the uh, Jewel of the Nile? When the no, going that's gets nine tough. Words, my <laughs> tough, 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 tough. <laughs> tough get going. I remember that. Yeah. Okay, good. Everybody heard. Everybody heard uh, Ocean. Good. I think uh, we got one person in the chat room who might be losing their mind. Well done. Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, yeah. Good, good food all around. <laughs> Yanni. <laughs> <laughs> they heard Yanni. Great. Yanni. Sorry. 
Billy, Billy Laurel. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> get out of my Yanny and get into my Laurel. That's right, exactly. Uh, Brian, you sent me pictures yes. last night of something super cool. Please describe it for the listeners. Well, what I sent you pictures of last night uh, was the stage at the Pepsi Center where Tina and I saw Fleetwood Mac currently on tour. Um, not really promoting an album. This is kind of a greatest hits tour, and it is uh, it is Sans um, Lin- uh, Lindsey Buckingham, who is... Well, the band is just not talking to Lindsey Buckingham right now. Basically, they've iced him out yeah. because he's been difficult to work with in the past, and he... Um, he appealed to them last year when they said, "All right, we're gonna we're gonna do a tour, kind of a rumors tour." And he kind of already knew they weren't gonna bring him along. And uh, he said, "Well, do you guys mind waiting? I'm I'm releasing a new solo album. I'd love three months to tour with my band." And they just wouldn't reply to him. And they said, "Nope, we're doing our thing. Burn." So, yeah, Fleetwood Mac add on tour. Now, here's the cool thing: they are touring with. Um, uh, Tina and I were talking about this. We're like, can you think of a musician that we like more than Neil Finn? And we could not come up with anyone. I mean, I like the band Squeeze, but uh, Chris Difford and Tilbrook, I'm sorry, Chris Difford and Glenn Tilbrook, uh, I like, but not as much as I like Neil Finn. Yeah. You know, you're it's always, like we, you're we're we're always talking about him. Neil Finn. You love your Neil Finn. Love Neil Finn. Yeah. Seen him in every iteration, Split Ends, Crowded House, the Finn Brothers, solo stuff, all that. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess I've never seen him in concert as with Split Ends. But anyway, right. um, they brought him in and Mike Campbell, who was one of the Heartbreakers, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, and um, to kind of fill in for Lindsey Buckingham. And man, they did. It was a killer show. It was really, really good. Uh, every, every hit. And you, um, you would think with like, you know, uh, John McVie and Christine McVie and uh, Mick Fleetwood and Stevie Nicks all have been playing together for 50 plus years or 40 plus years. Right. Um, they uh, they would kind of like say, well, Neil, we'll let you sing back up on a couple songs. Mm. No, I mean, they they realized, hey, you're in for Lindsey Buckingham. You are going to be singing all the Lindsey Buckingham stuff. And they didn't shy away from a lot of the Lindsey Buckingham songs, like uh, Secondhand News. Um, shoot, what was the one? Uh, peace in My Mind or something like that? Mm. Um, I don't remember. Trying to get some peace in my mind. Oh, right, right, right. Anyway, uh, and he he killed it. Um, they even let him do uh, Don't Dream It's Over. And that, it's funny because... Um, uh, at that point, like you're hearing the opening guitar lick of of uh, Don't Dream It's Over. Yeah. And you can hear about a fourth of the audience go, oh, that's who that is. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really cool. So he started the song acoustic and he's up there and then uh, Stevie Nicks comes out and does uh, um, does a verse and then they do the, the, the last choruses together. And... Um, uh it like it was the bring the house down moment of the of the concert like everyone's pulling out their phones and they're like you know waving them back and forth with the the flash mm-hmm. <laughs> the flash turned on it was it was uh crazy to see an entire arena filled with those lights like that it was really really cool i can't imagine what it looked like up on stage because all we could see was just the opposite side oh right and, but from the stage you've got all the people on the floor seats and then you know all the, the people on our side that we couldn't see looked uh, looked amazing but well, all uh, those flashlights from people's all those leds and kill you up on stage out there <laughs> right you know? he's super bright yeah. but um no really good show they did everything that you wanted them to do you know they did the the requisite stevie nicks solo songs gypsy rihanna and landslide all those they did uh you know you, you think about it and and maybe a lot of people are are fleetwood mac fans in the audience maybe a lot of them aren't but really fleetwood mac is like four bands right i mean you could right. you basically you tell uh, fleetwood mac to write a song about rain mm-hmm. and um and mick fleetwood and john McVie are going to talk about how the blues you know how you get the blues when it's raining lindsey buckingham is going to write a song about the dark clouds yep. uh 
uh, Christine McVie is going to write a song about the rainbows, and then uh, Stevie Nicks is going to write a song about the girl that she lent her umbrella to. Yeah, no, <laughs> totally. That's a good. That's a great way to describe them. I mean, they're one of my favorite bands of all time, and and one of the greatest bands ever. If you're not a fan of Fleetwood Mac, you're insane. Yeah, I don't care even what age you are. Go listen to Rumors and yeah. be reminded about yeah. possibly the greatest album ever made. It's one, so good. If not one of the greatest albums, definitely definitely one of the greatest albums of oh, all time. Yeah. And and in the heat, that was the only thing that you really miss with no Lindsay Buckingham is stuff like, you know, go your own way, which was basically it's ironic, um, isn't it? Yeah, it was. It was. It was uh, Lindsay Buckingham basically saying, you know, piss off Stevie Nicks. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. <laughs> and she had her two year long affair with Mick Fleetwood and Christine McVie split up with her husband and started dating the lighting guy and yeah. i mean there was so much crap going on around that album that the it was the best use of bitterness oh, <laughs> to make time. an album ever big time but he has literally gone his own way now and every he's by the way every way. headline i was just searching for oh i want to get some more information about why the band's not the, uh, why he's not with the band anymore yeah. every headline yeah. tries to use the line lindsey buckingham goes his oh, own way in some form or another of course of course <laughs> they do, yes stupid 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 but anyway uh, well, that's it's great. The Huffingtonization I'm... of America. Is exactly. What it is. <laughs> exactly. I mean, they're not getting any younger. These guys are all like a thousand years old, and uh, you know, still out there kicking it. So, it's, I think it's a good uh, show to catch if it comes to your uh, city. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Dan to... Wally says the two people they could stand to lose are Mick Fleetwood and John McVie. Ironically, mm. they're easily replaceable. I, you know, I'm totally going to disagree on that. Mick Fleetwood is. He did a drum solo last night that. Uh, Tina was getting a little bored with after a while, but it was a really long drum, drum solo. The dude is amazing, and he's he's uh, talking with his thick English accent. You guys out there, mm-hmm. you know, like, getting us to to yell back at him. Yeah, he might be Welsh or Scottish. I don't know, but uh, I like him. Um, he's great. And he's, he's the he's amazing, the mascot. Um, he's a big giant tall yeah. guy with a crazy beard. He can't kick. He can't not be in the band. You know, and without without. Uh, Mick Fleetwood, without John McVie, without uh, Peter Green, you wouldn't have songs like uh, Black Magic Woman, which obviously was a bigger hit for Santana, but but was originally done by Fleetwood Mac. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got uh, Oh Well, um, the um, uh, Don't Ask Me What I Think of You, You Might Not Like the Answer, or I Might Not Give the Answer That You Want Me To, mm-hmm. you know, like all those blues. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Dan Wally's trying to trying to defend his his, his uh, side. You would still see them without them. Yeah, you know if it was Christine McVie, Buckingham, Nix, or Neil Finn and and uh, Mike Campbell in this in this case, I'd still go see him. And but they totally wrote songs like John McVie, totally wrote a lot of those earlier songs. Yeah. Anyway, by the way, Stevie Nicks, before, Stevie Nicks before looks great. With, uh, she looks Buckingham awesome. Nicks. Don't you think? What's she, that? The Stevie Nicks looks great at her age. She still looks great. Yeah. yeah. And oh my God, I should have counted. Um, it would have probably been in the 200s the number of times that she uh, twirled around with her arms outstretched during the show. You know, the, yeah, the she, whole Stevie Nicks dance. And yeah. at one point, we're looking down because there's this behind the all the floor seats, there's this big gap. And. Um, there's this this you know area basically where people can kind of walk through, but there's even some room for dancing. During it might have been Rhiannon or Gold Dust Woman. It was one of the Stevie Nicks numbers. There were three women dressed like Stevie Nicks, all just sitting there, spinning around, twirling with their arms outstretched, holding their <laughs> holding their dress just like Stevie <laughs> Nicks would do. Yeah. <laughs> Spent more time watching them. Um, we had great seats for being up on the third level of the Pepsi Center. We were in the very front row so we kind of could look down and see the second level mm-hmm. <laughs> like right on the right on the uh, uh, up against the, the front and there was nobody behind us because there was a wall where the next section the back sections of three mm. were so if we wanted to stand up we weren't blocking anybody I'm always really self-conscious about that um, the only problem is we had the aisle seats and so everybody coming or going from our aisle we'd have to kind of stand up or move our legs to the side if we weren't already standing up yeah um and uh these ladies who kept coming in and out of our row must have had bladders the size of thimbles yet every time they disappear and come back they would they would come back with beers and they wouldn't come back together so they leave all at the same time like four women all would leave at the same time yeah 
And then one would come back with a beer and we'd have to get up and then we'd sit down. And then another one would come back with a big beer and then we'd have to stand up and sit down. Mm -hmm. It was like, listen, could you guys maybe organize it so at least we're getting up once. You guys are coming in together, leaving together. Coordinate. That's all we're asking. By the, by the end of it, Tina and I are imitating them every time they go by. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Uh, all right, did they play my did they play my least favorite uh song? It's um Oh, I can't remember no. the name of it, but it's Don't the, Stop Thinking About Tomorrow. Yes, I hate that song. I hate it. <laughs> they did. That was their that was their uh their encore closer. They had a uh like a duet between uh, Stevie Nicks and and Christine McVie as the real closer song, but this mm. was like their their powerhouse closer, and this was the song that Tina and I left during. Yeah. <laughs> we actually left during "Don't Stop." Yeah, but because um, it gets used at uh, like political rallies and crap. I just it I does, and actually, uh, you know, when when uh, Stevie Nicks did uh, "Landslide," usually she dedicates it to her father because that's who she wrote the song about. Right. But last night she dedicated it to Bush Senior. Which oh. I thought was a really cool oh, yeah, thing. And nice. talking about how he'd be looking down and saying, Really, come on, people, can we just let's just figure out a way to get along and all point our arrows in the same direction where Yeah. You know, it's like you she's know, it's a, really sweet. Because she's a huge hippie and would normally not dedicate <laughs> anything to a Republican, but that's that's a really interesting gesture. I like that. It is. Yeah. yeah. She, she is a huge hippie. Totally a huge hippie. Oh, she's the biggest hippie. That whole the whole band's just a bunch of hippies. But uh yeah. but yeah, like it's a I I'm gonna listen to rumors today. I like that album a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. And it's some of my some of my favorite covers that exist are covers of Fleetwood Mac songs. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, your uh uh Natalie Maine's uh cover of Landslide is amazing. Yeah. She did that with the with the or is Dixie, that the Dixie Chicks? That was Dixie Chicks, yeah. That was Full on Dixie Chicks. One of her final uh, things with them, I think, before they, you know, kind of went. I don't think they broke up so much as they just kind of went and did other stuff. But um, she, yeah, I love that landslide cover. I love. Um, is Holiday Road theirs, or is that is that no, Buckingham? I like that song too, but I like covers of it more than I like it. <laughs> yeah, the Matt Pond PA cover of Holiday Road is is oh, yeah. one of the best. We played that here. It's really good. We have. Yeah. yeah. Forever ago. We have to do that again yeah. sometime. Billy Corrigan? Oh, I think Yeah. Yeah. Smashing Pumpkins did a cover of Landslide that's really good. Really? Yeah. Why can't I think of that? Was it Smashing Pumpkins? Or? And it took him down. Oh, I have heard it. Okay. I'm a and a and a <laughs> I have heard it. I have totally heard it. <laughs> I had to hear the weird voice to, for me yeah, to get it. Yeah, exactly. You know, we never, <laughs> yeah. we never would have found Billy Corgan on like The Voice or American Idol, and I love that. <laughs> I love that. That's what, you know, that's uh, that's a perfect example of why those shows are so ineffective. To I agree to uh, to our style of music. Yeah, they're like sugar water. They're just dumb. Uh, by the way, he uh, looks like Uncle Fester now. That's his. That's yeah, how he looks. Yeah. So. And he's going by the name William. He's not even going by the name Billy Corgan anymore. Oh, <laughs> it's William Corgan. Is his real name William oh. Corgan the Third or something? Really? I think is what these. And, yeah. they, and they're not. Are they still? Uh, Nick saw him in concert uh, like a, two months ago. They were touring. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's like almost all of the original lineup of Smashing Pumpkins. I think. Uh, Darcy is not with them anymore. I can't remember. She's but, the. Um, she the. No, there's the Japanese guitarist guy. And then there's, James Eha. Yeah, and then there's. Oh yeah, Darcy's. I don't think Darcy's there anymore. Yeah. She left after. Eh. This is yeah. We really. This is like. Uh, welcome to um, uh, spinning the records with Brian and Scott in the morning. <laughs> I didn't realize in 2011. Uh, Corgan entered the world of professional wrestling. Shut up! Really? Yeah, I missed yes. that. They what, got on, like on a ring and fought wrestlers and stuff. I guess founding Chicago-based Resistance Pro Wrestling, he later joined Total Nonstop Action Wrestling, now known as Impact Wrestling, in 2015, becoming its president in August 2016. After leaving TNA in November, Corgan purchased the National Wrestling Alliance (NWA), uh, gaining its ownership in October 2017. So, Billy this, is great. Owns- this is great. This is great. <laughs> okay, wait. I got video. Uh, hold on. They're just arguing. Okay, hold on. This YouTube is being. Buildings myself. Crowds are rocking. Bully! Fan- Bully! Corgi, you need to help me. I've been screwed. I've lost my job, mate. I've lost my job. Yeah, they're just having a fake little confrontation. 
Is he? Is it with Groundskeeper Willie? I can't tell. <laughs> it's somebody named Grado. I don't. I don't follow wrestling, so some people are going to hear that name. And probably know, but okay. uh, Grado confronts Billy Corrigan backstage. Uh, Grado oh, no. feels he was screwed at feast or uh, feast or fired, and in his description. Or sorry, desperation to get his job back on the Impact Wrestling roster. He turns to Smashing Pumpkins frontman Billy Corgan. Wow. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. But yeah. he, he looks like Uncle Fester. Good for him. <laughs> and the kid from Small Small Wonder. Oh, sure. All of, yeah, exactly. Kid from Small Wonder. I love that. <laughs> it was one of my favorites. All favorite. of us bald guys look alike. Yeah. I know. Yeah, another Irish, another Scottish bald guy. Looks like Brian. Anyway, there you go. Nailed it. Uh, congratulations, Billy Corrigan, and your wrestling future <laughs> looks bright. All right. Um, yes. Captain Kipper says, wrestling is so uninteresting to me. I have this weird thing with wrestling where there's a big part of me that wants to really be into it. Like, I like the theatrics. It should appeal to me. But I can't. I just can't get into it. I was more, I guess I was kind of into it in the 80s with like that, you know, the Hulk Hogan era. Yeah. Right, Monster but the giant you couldn't after. help it though; it was everywhere, so you kind of had to deal with it. But um, I just never, yeah. I can't be like you know Justin and and, and uh, others in our community who are just Mitsula. so yeah, so hardcore. I, can't do when it. When Saturday morning cartoons were over, I could not change the channel fast enough because it was always WrestleMania right after it, or some wrestling, some wrestling uh, program right after. It's like okay, time to finally go outside and play like my mom wants me to do on Saturday afternoon. Right. I mean, in a lot of I ways, never, never got into wrestling, even the even the Hulk Hogan. And, yeah. You know the the classic era. You know, in a way, that stuff was and still is, I guess, soap operas for dudes, mm -hmm. because you know it's just a bunch of dramatic stories about conflict and and it's all fake and and they're all up there. I mean, they're all athletic. It's real to me, Scott. It's real to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's still real to me. It's still real to me. <laughs> I wonder how that guy's doing. I wonder if it's still real to him. I wonder, yeah, exactly. I wonder if he's changed his tune. <laughs> it's no longer real to me. It's, it's not real to me anymore. <laughs> I'm watching Real Housewives. That's real to me. That's real to me. <laughs> What's funny is that it'd probably be... We're just assuming this is how he talks constantly. Yo, I have a cheeseburger. Yeah. Give yeah. me a combo. <laughs> Could you pass the salt? <laughs> Here is for those not aware of who we're talking about. This is him. It's still real to me, damn it! <laughs> ah, I love that guy. Aww. I love that guy. Yeah, I'm just not that guy. I can't get into no. it. No, no, not like those people do. Who are you calling those people? <laughs> All right, it's time for the news. This is your radio newscaster with another exclusive sensational summary of world and local events. It's the news brought to you by. The Geek Grills podcast records live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash geekgrills on Monday evenings. Last night, they had a special guest, Brian Volk Weiss. He's the creator of The Toys That Made Us. You know, that show on Netflix and a new upcoming show called Discontinued that will premiere December 16th on The CW. Mm. Will, it, will it feature uh, romantic involvement of very attractive people while one of them might be a superhero in disguise? Oh, I don't well, know. Maybe. Probably not. Discontinued might mean like toys that no longer made us or something like that. Hey, join the Gen 9 of 12 and True Noob. They're excited to present their 115th show and hope you'll join them. Find us uh, anytime at geekgrills.com. Get the podcast today. Yeah, do it. It sounds good. That sounds like a great catch to talk good. to that guy. Yeah, I'd love to love to hear what he says about that. Discontinued. That probably is. It's like the toys that no longer make us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, what would it be? Like... Um, what things? Stretch, uh, jarts. Jarts would be their first uh, episode. Sure. Lawn dart. Lawn darts. Lawn darts. <laughs> or uh, or even like you could say Atari or Sega or you could to you could go crazy with the toys. There's all sorts of stuff that nobody does anymore that used to be a big deal. Can you still buy yeah, a Furby? Can I get a Furby now? You know, Furbies came back last year and had instead of the moving creepy eyes, mm -hmm. had digital eyes. Let's see. Like a uh, like a LCD display where the eyes could blink and move and and all that stuff. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, there's little screens. They're expensive. Yeah. 188 sure. bucks. Or, I'm sorry, 122 wow. bucks after their deal here. But geez, Louise, that's crazy. That's 
I still have my uh, Furby, my skinless skeletal Furby. Yeah. Over in the other room that uh, still still moves and talks and does all the stuff. You should put that on screen. Oh, that's what I forgot to do. Did you get a box? Did you get a thing? I have in the not mail? yet. No, I have not yet. We talked about. Oh yeah, you haven't seen. Uh, Should I not show this off till you get yours? No, don't show it off. Don't show it off until I get until Dunaway and I get ours. Okay. Randy got his yesterday. You got yours. Yeah. But uh, Dunaway and I have not gotten ours. You are gonna lose and your our, freaking mind. I can't wait. Our beneficiary is in the chat room too. Yeah, um, you are right. you are going to lose your mind. It's the coolest thing. Wait. Oh my god, I can't wait. And the oh, I can't wait to show it off. All right, well hopefully no you get spoilers, it today. Scott. Let me just put it this way. It runs with <laughs> Shmatari Shwani Smix Hundred. <laughs> Twenty Shmix Hundred. <laughs> Twenty. Shmix I like that your you, both of your changes to the words are Shmix Shmix Tari <laughs> Twenty Shmix Hundred. Exactly. Nice. Anyway, I uh, I can't wait for you to get your yours. It's it's incredible. Oh. I if, if that particular, I won't say even their name, but that person that's in the chat raving about it, like uh, Randy just going on about it in slack i'm like oh my god i can't wait i'm i'm so i'm so uh excited to, it's unlike to anything i've ever gotten in the mail ever. that's what randy said almost yeah. his exact words yeah it's this great big box showed up oh, i was it's thrilled one of paltrow's head is it no i guess there wouldn't be four of them no there's never four <laughs> is it <laughs> never mind <laughs> It's a it's, each is a piece of Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, <laughs> kind of where I was going. Well, you know, you assume he chopped her up. That's what we assume uh, from yeah, that movie. Yeah, yeah that yeah. movie. Uh, yeah. uh, hey, uh, check this out, Can Canadians. Hey, Canadians. I know we have a few in the chat room. Always, uh, this this story is for you. A Canadian woman mm -hmm. was stranded here in the states in an Iowa mud road. So a muddy road in Iowa. They call it sure. on um, Iowa mud road, but they Iowa mean, mud road. Very weird. Anyway, for three days, and she survived on only these things. Kombucha and marzipan pancake. Or marzipan, however you say it. Marz marzipan. Marzipan yeah. cake. I love marzipan. Do you? Yeah. I don't like saying it. It's an annoying word, don't you think? By the way, when we when we uh, put all four pieces of Gwyneth Paltrow's head together, <laughs> it forms Paltron. <laughs> and tries to sell me some kind of... Snake oil to help me. Some, some goop. Yes. Yeah, sells me some goop. <laughs> Shoots goop out of her, out of her gauntlets. <laughs> I guess uh, uh, what's her name or uh, uh, Netflix is under some fire for. I guess she's getting some kind of show on Netflix and she where she hawks this crap and people are on really Netflix something like that. I got. I don't know oh the details. God. Are they? I hope they're not really going to get into the whole like have a QVC. I mean, they can't really without it being live, right? Well, I don't think it's like that. I think it's more of a. Her kind of like, imagine like a cooking show. Her going, mm. all right. Now here's how you take uh, goat semen and mix it with a little bit of milk, and next thing you know, you got a perfect mask for for your facial deal mm. in the morning. Like she may, like that kind of stuff. Okay. I, I don't actually gotcha. know. Yeah, I'm not sure what I think about that. By the way, Tina and I watched um, because it was a recommendal. We watched the first episode of the Curious Creations of Christine McConnell. Oh, I hear. I can't that. Remember, yeah, was that the... your recommendation or a Nicole? That must have been a Nicole recommendation. Uh, I don't even think it was even Nicole. It was. Uh... Somebody else, oh, who was that? They talked about the puppet and everything. Yeah, I thought that was Nicole. Maybe not. Mm, but I don't remember. Uh, maybe the weirdest damn thing I've seen on Netflix. Uh, weird. And I've accidentally stumbled on some some weird stuff on Netflix. <laughs> this might be the weirdest thing really? I've seen on Netflix. Yeah. So she's the ex, well not ex, I think she still does it, but she's the YouTube lady who does weird. weird. Yeah, and I could see that working better on YouTube than a really highly produced. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it it was, uh, and I guess the Hans the the Henson, one of the Henson kids is involved with it. But man, Tina and I just couldn't. Yeah, the uh, 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 not the main, not not John Henson, the no, uh, the other Hen some other Henson, right? Yeah, the lesser Hen <laughs> a lesser Henson, well, a lesser Henson. <laughs> <laughs> was it Nicole? I just don't remember. It says it was Nicole. Okay, I don't remember that. For some reason, it seems like it was not Nicole, but I guess so. So, just, oh yeah. Did you find it just? It's just too odd for its own sake, or what? It's too odd for its own sake. I mean, hmm. don't get me wrong. The stuff that she makes 
is incredible. But like, all right, one of the things, the first thing that you see in the very first episode is her making a bone using a, uh, a hard pretzel stick covered with a dough made from like peanut butter and confectioner sugar and stuff like that, right? Yeah. And she she shapes it and freezes it and then shaves it down with a potato peeler and then freezes it again and then uh, does some uh, airbrushing to make it look more like a bone. And it, man, it's like, all right, make sure to serve this for your guests in two weeks when you're done making all these <laughs> damn things. <laughs> uh, well, it does sound like a mixed reaction in the chat who has time i i I told you i said i I bet maybe one percent of the people who watch this show on netflix and it even one percent feels like a high number to me one percent of the people who watch this actually make the things that she's describing how to make because i'll bet more people watch film sack movies with us than people who watch that (laughs) that that actually made yeah yes i think that's true well interesting all right anyway yeah check out the first episode let me know what you think because it it uh I'm glad I saw it, but I I took it off my uh, my list as soon as we watched the as soon as we finished the first episode. I said, "Well, that was good, but I don't really need to watch any more of these." <laughs> Do you watch the British Bake Off uh, Christmas deal yet? No, not yet, not yet. It's good. Um, it's only an ep- it's a single episode. It's not like a whole series or anything. But listen, we were at Fleetwood Mac last night. I couldn't watch anything, but we'll probably we'll actually we'll probably uh, fire that up tonight. That sounds like just the just the thing we need. Take this sponge cake and put it down. <laughs> uh, soggy bottom and it turned around <laughs> paul hollywood will not be happy about that no um hey let's let's hear about this canadian woman stranded on the iowa mud road <laughs> yeah let's do it and i don't want to ever hear the word mars upon mars upon again i hate that word so much do you like the do you like mars upon i like the cake i don't like the word i also yeah, don't okay. like the word kombucha either both those make me want to die but anyway whatever A Canadian woman is thankful to be alive after spending more than three days stranded in her car when it became stuck in the mud on a rural Iowa road. Terry Harnish, age 72. She's, Mm. uh, you know, getting up there. She's from Hubbard's, uh, Nova Scotia. Hubbard's. Hubbard's. That's cool. Uh, Visiting friends for Thanksgiving. She took a wrong turn onto a dirt road outside of Fairfield. She was rescued after her car was discovered by a group of snowmobilers. I was a bit concerned. I knew my angels and God would save me, but I'm glad those boys came along. She told the De- Des Moines Register uh, that week. Uh, Harnish, who was staying at the Mar- Marahi- Maharishi University, Mah- Maharishi. Of- Maharishi yeah. University of Management, was driving to visit friends Thursday afternoon when she took the wrong turn. She says she passed a few farmhouses before encountering several inches of mud. The car started to fishtail, she said. Uh, anyway, the entire time she uh, was there, all she had with her was some kombucha and some cake, and that's and she survived <laughs> on it for three days. She slowly rationed through. That's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I hope actually... that she wasn't driving all the way to Iowa from Nova Scotia. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, you'd hope not, right? Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, I guess she was. Well, maybe she was because she came down to visit. It's not very far, though, is it? Mm-hmm. Because you're going, Nova Scotia's just up north. It's like what? It'd be like me driving. This would be like me going to Vegas, I think. Wouldn't it? No, I think Nova Scotia's on the far eastern side of... Like far, of, far uh, eastern? For some reason, I, it seemed like it's... I, I don't know why I have this in my head, but I thought it was... on the far east side of, uh, of uh, Canada. Mm. Um, yeah, it's a 30-hour drive. Jeez. Oh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> well, there's no way she was doing that then. Via I-90. You take I-90 almost the whole way. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Can you imagine? 30-hour drive. Yeah. F, F that. That's what I say. Yeah. I wouldn't do that. Uh, a convicted murderer. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a happy thought. A convicted murderer pretends to be a cellmate and walks out of an Oklahoma jail scot-free. So the guy that was supposed to get out he didn't yeah. leave. Oh, his gotcha. M- so he was in a cell with a guy who was who was uh, yeah. had gotten his uh, his walking papers, parole, his walking papers, his parole, and and uh, he says, "I'm gonna pretend to be." Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's hear more about this. I'm guy. gonna actually play the video because, hold on. You know, just found out about it. Cameron Matthews. All right, I'm gonna back that up. Uh, it's it's the only way you can do it because this website is all video, no article. Oh. Okay. So here, so here you go, Chad. I'll put the video up even so you can see it here. There's this funny looking dude here. 
who looks like a, he's got a he's got a beard for a fa- beard for a head and head for a beard. <laughs> uh, You're my old friend then. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw that episode the other day. <laughs> it was on FXXX or whatever the hell the yeah. FX channel is. Yeah, sure. uh, <laughs> It's a really good one. All right, here's this guy. Let's check him Crazy. out. I mean, I you know, just found out about it. Cameron Matthews is talking about the jail escape by this man. Escape? Did she Walker. really say She that? said escape. Newscaster said escape? She said escape. <sighs> I can't take these people seriously. <clears throat> Oklahoma News 4, hire some oh, uh, uh, literate four, people. For shame. Very, yeah, it's fours for shame. All right, let's, let's hear well, more. These, these guys are both black. I could see how. <laughs> yeah, I can see how that would happen. All right, here we go. Yeah. Prison officials say Wonker escaped jail while he was waiting for his court. <laughs> she did it twice. <laughs> uh, yeah, Dan Wally's right in the chat. Jury, Justin says that too. He says, uh, Ex- es- es- escape. Escape. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere out there, Free Hotel Room is composing an angry tweet to Oklahoma News 4. <laughs> no kidding. For some reason, this video won't just play itself. It keeps jumping to another page. Jeez, Yahoo. Oh, Yahoo, you're bad. You're a poorly made website. Look at this. I'm just waiting for it to play. Okay, now it's playing. Oh, yeah. that is. Lame. All right, let's hear the rest of this. talking about the jail escape by this man, 34-year-old Patrick Walker. On Thursday, prison officials say Walker escaped jail while he was waiting for his court hearing. As far as how he was able to do that, uh, we understood that uh, one of his cellmates, uh, he was able to get his uh, that inmate's identification from him and uh, basically assumed his name. The Department of Corrections say someone posted bond for that inmate and Walker was able to walk free as Charles Pendarvis. Walker, also known as Naughty Walker, was serving a life sentence for a 2003 murder conviction before... Naughty Walker. <laughs> naughty, naughty. What was it? And the other guy's name was P- P- Rascal Penn Jarvis or whatever his name was. <laughs> <laughs> Which probably will now become the, uh, the yeah. title of this episode. Yeah. Chat room. I'm not... Okay, they're going, hold the phone. Scott is roasting somebody for pronouncing a word wrong. Uh, <laughs> I think the word escape and versus something like uh, I don't know. Give me a hard one. Um, uh, the, 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 well, that guy's uh, name uh, or Maharishi. Yeah, Mahari or whatever. That's different. You know that's different. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Come at me. I'm I'm, I'm ready for some ads today. Let's go. <laughs> rascal. The, the escape of Rascal Pen Jarvis. <laughs> that really needs to be the show title. The escape. Like, we're, we're done. <laughs> yeah, the escape of Rascal Pen Jarvis. <laughs> which I'm pretty sure is not correct. I don't know what I said or what the guy uh, said, but I think I said it wrong. Everybody, oh my God, they're like listing both Rees, Wayne, Rees. What's Rees? Like Rees Davies. Oh, the, instead the of Rise Davies. Rise. Yeah, I think I do that. That's true. Uh, <laughs> Leave Scott alone, says Slack Vanessa. Thank you, Vanessa. You're my Leave best. Scott alone. <laughs> You're my best friend today. Uh, all right, moving on. I mean, they all make a they all make a fine point. <laughs> I do. I do yeah. screw up words a lot. I shouldn't make fun of this poor lady who can't say it. Es- exca- now I'm doing it wrong. Escape. She can't do it twice. Escape. <clears throat> all right. It's Di- new forward escape. Diane Talis. I do that one right. What are you talking about, Dersham? I, I screw that one up on There Will Be Dungeons on purpose because I'm dinking with John. I don't do that one by accident. Okay. Sure. Moving on. A uh, Here's another story. It's a 9 uh, 9-11. 9-1-1 story. You like those, don't you? You're a big fan of those? I do like 9 stories. Oh, good. Because more this... than 9-11 stories. <laughs> <laughs> I do, too. I do, too. I think our emergency services are much more fun to talk about than the horrific yeah. events of 9-11. A passerby called 911 about a man dangling from a roof. It turned out to be a Clark Griswold dummy. But oh, the, yeah. Okay. This happens every year. Yeah. Someone puts these up every year. In fact. Uh, yeah. Um, and someone gets fooled by it and calls the police. Yep. Here you go, Chad. I'll show you a picture of this. There you go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So someone puts these up. It's it's Clark in his stupid clothes that he wears when he goes up and falls off his roof because he's trying to put up lights. Uh, the problem is you got this 65-year-old do-gooder who was trying mm-hmm. to do the nice thing. It was a, he's a veteran. His name is Alfred Norwood Jr. He slammed on his brakes when he saw this, stopped his truck in the middle of the road, and turned on the hazard lights. Uh, he's a veteran from Austin, said he was heading home uh, after taking his wife to work one hazy morning. 
uh, earlier that week when he uh, uh, saw what he what appeared to him to be a man in a blue plaid shirt, jeans, and Velcro sneakers hanging from the rooftop by his fingertips. Now, keep in mind, it's a little foggy in the morning. You know, a little weird. Maybe a little hard to tell right. that this was a dummy. Uh, the figure was dangling, or sorry, tangled up on a string of holiday lights, and the ladder was just out of reach. Surveillance video from the Nest Cam shows Norwood up, running up to the home, screaming, Oh, mister, please hold on. He grabbed the ladder, ripping it from the display, and repositioned it for him. All right, can you reach it? Can you reach it? He added. And when there was no response, Norwood shouted, Help! <laughs> it looked like the guy Aww. was in distress, and I wanted to help him. So I took a chance and tried to help him. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Turned out to be a dummy. A dummy fashioned specifically after the Christmas icon, Clark Griswold. All I was thinking was trying to do was help the guy, Norwood explain. Aww. Aww. That's sweet. That's <laughs> really sweet. I love the fact that he like tried like he tried to get the ladder over to him. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad. Just grab a hold of it. Yeah. Why aren't you moving? Why aren't you moving? Are you Why do you hate Saturday Night Live so much? <laughs> Why did you leave community? <laughs> Why are you so difficult to work with, says every other actor ever. Why did your Gerald Ford not really sound like Gerald Ford at all? <laughs> so many questions. So many questions. Why are you Chevy Chase and I'm not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Check. Go back in time go, for that yeah, reference. YouTube that one, folks. Yeah. <laughs> That's an old one. That's really great. I, I feel bad for the old dude. He's just trying to do a nice yeah. thing. Not just a nice thing, just like his civic duty to help a fellow man in need, you know? That's right. That was, that was his a, opening, by the way, folks, on Weekend Update. I'm Jimmy yeah. Chase, and you're not. Yeah, that was his thing he did yeah, every week. That was his thing. Which yeah. wasn't was really, if opening? you think about it, maybe it needed maybe it needed to be there in 72 or whatever. Not really that funny. It's okay, I guess. <laughs> right. You know? I mean, I used to say uh, the World of Warcraft podcast, so you don't have to, which is similar yeah. to that. So you guess, know what though? It's it's funny, but it's become it's kind of taken a life on the uh, of its own. I guess so. Somebody made the comment uh, a couple weeks ago when I closed my show with uh, uh, that just about covers it for tonight, right? Oh, that's a good that's a good tagline. There you go. Yeah, and they're like, that's about as bad as somebody naming their album under the covers. Oh, <laughs> like come on, that oh. was that's what I've been using since for 15 years. I've been using that one. You come on keep, now, you should keep using it. Don't let them change you. Exactly. Don't You'll never it. take that away from me. Some kid was born in a in a hospital, just slurped right out of his mom, and oh, then geez. and then you made a show, and now yeah, he's fifteen. And he's almost driving. Yeah, he's almost driving. <laughs> Think of that. Exactly. Ugh. Uh, finally, hey. Oh, was it? Was it Talia? <laughs> Talia. <laughs> what happened? What happened? I forgive you, Talia. Oh, that purse. What was it? Lizarelle. Oh, that was uh, to Lizarelle. <laughs> well, well, you know, Brian's just, uh, he is who he is. All right. So uh, remember that thing with the Danny DeVito shrine they found behind the uh, yes, bathroom yeah. thing? Well, there's another one of these, and it was just discovered under a stairwell, a shrine to Hollywood actor Steve Buscemi. <laughs> uh, best known for his roles in Fargo, Reservoir Dogs, and the like, was found under a stairwell in Green Hall. On Wednesday, again, a college thing. Two students mm -hmm. discovered this thing. Uh, literary students junior Maddie Garthright and her friend, economics senior Katie Brennan, were walking upstairs to the computer lab in Green Hall to study when they saw a traffic cone near the bottom of the stairs. Brennan said she went to investigate and noticed a, do a small door at the bottom of the stairs was open. After going inside, they found a framed photo of Steve Buscemi with his beautiful eyes. Alongside yeah. prayer yeah. candles, a toy phone, and a used pregnancy test. Among other <laughs> items. Uh, it this says, one far less uh, Blair Witch Project looking than the Danny DeVito one. Like, this one looks like someone said, oh, somebody did it for Danny DeVito. Quick, let's do one and, and take a picture of it. There's. It feels new, doesn't it? It does. It feels brand spanking new. Like, yeah. nobody's really spent any time in this, uh, yeah. in this hidden corner. No, the candles aren't burning enough or anything. Mm -hmm. But it's this cute little shrine. Uh, to it is actors. a cool shrine. I can't tell what that. Oh, that's a phone. The pink thing over there. Okay. Yeah, the pink thing's a phone, I guess. And yeah. uh, that's weird. What kind of phone is that? That's not a phone. Phone. What is? That? No, I think it's like a toy rainbow bright phone. Oh, or, you know. Okay. My Little Pony phone or something. And then this white thing is the. I'm not talking about you, Rainbow Bright. I'm talking about Rainbow Bright. Right, Rainbow Bright. Get it together. What about yeah. this? This is a little pea stick there. The little uh, 
white thing is yeah a... i think that's the the white thing is a pregnancy test it looks like there's two quarters and a dime and i can't tell what's that thing in the middle is that oh, i think that's candle? a that is a um a votive candle that uh has a battery in it like as opposed a little to one led you, thing yeah yeah, yeah. yeah a little led and they probably have a little fake yeah. little flicker or whatever i have one of those exactly i just can't tell what the thing is back to the right of the candles looks like a uh pina colada umbrella well i'm gonna show you this hold on a second all right so i got this <laughs> i got this candle here it yeah it feels like wax if you touch it yeah but you're uh -huh. supposed to blow on it <laughs> wait <laughs> why didn't it work oh, hold on. <laughs> maybe i don't have it on <laughs> why isn't it working is battery dead maybe i haven't used it in a while <laughs> legacy anyway. podcaster but it's supposed to be. It's really Hall cool. Of Fame podcaster everywhere. When it when it's going, it's really yeah. like realistic, and, and and it is it is actually wax. That's why it's cool. This whole, oh, this is whole it really thing wax? is wax. This yeah, side, so? yeah, and it doesn't melt, and it, there's no heat generated. It's all fake, but it just is really flickery and looks super real. Oh, and when that's you, cool. Hold on, hold that up again because it looks like it. So it wiggles back and forth. Yeah, you see that thing that's moving. That's really cool. Yeah, it's like on a little a little gimbal. And, huh. and 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 it looks stupid now because it's just this white tab. But when it's lit up, it looks like fire. Well, the way the light is hitting it, it looks like it's lit up. Like yeah. that really looks like a lit candle right now. Yeah, it does, the, right? And when you move it, except that it's casting a shadow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's usually not something that happens. But uh, when and when you want to put it out, you just go and it blows out. It's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. All right, it's just mood lighting. I can't remember who gave me that. I think it was Eric or somebody. <coughs> but when I build my my shrine to. Um, who would you build it to? This is a good question. Oh, so, who would you you've build got, it you've, to? You've just discovered uh, some space in the back of the Habit Burger that mm -hmm. uh, uh, you get to from the men's room. Yeah, <laughs> pulling the, the uh, tissue dispenser off the wall, the the hand towel dispenser off the wall. Right. You've got some space. Who do you build your shrine to? Um. Oh yeah, the Lucas Light absolutely nails it. By the way, it would be Tom Hardy. Oh yeah, probably Tom Hardy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'd do Tom Hardy. Uh, maybe Kevin Costner, maybe, um, <laughs> just trying to think of like actors I always dig. Like yeah. I just, no matter what they do, like I like Sam them. Rockwell would be a good one. Yeah, he'd be uh, good. I'd probably do, you know, Christopher Walken or, uh, yeah. Uh, Christopher, uh, somebody, somebody right now is probably working on their ironic Christopher Walken shrine. Oh, guaranteed. The, guaranteed. Yeah. Uh, -huh. uh, Bill, Bill, Co but Costner as the Mariner. No. Just Costner. <laughs> Carrying a tree that, you know, smells like pee. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of choices here. This is all very hard. John Goodman, maybe. Um, yeah, I don't know. But it's a weird thing. Uh, I think this one may have been set up in response to the other one, and somebody thinks they're being funny, and these girls just happen to catch it. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, and let's see. This is all... This is from the school paper, even the Mercury. Or no, is that a is that a school paper? Did you ever go to the Mercury? Is that a newspaper you've uh, been to? I went to the San Jose Mercury News, the UTD Mercury. That's got to be. Hmm. Let me see where where that's got to be it? a college paper, right? Doesn't that yeah, sound like I a, just can't even tell. Sounds like a college. Uh, paper. There we go. At the University of Texas, uh, Dallas. Okay. Yep, UTD. Oh, look at this. They get this. Don't get a UTD because it takes uh, a lot of antibiotics to get rid of it. Yeah. Or if you have one, uh, it's hard to get out. Wait, what? I don't know. I'm thinking of a UTI. Not UTI. <laughs> what's it called? What's the, yeah, UTI. UTI is a urinary tract, urinary infection, tract infection, but infection. But what's the what's the one I'm thinking of? That's a, it's a birth control oh, device. Oh, an STD is what you're thinking no, of. No, a birth control device. It's a... Oh, a U... A UDI? Uterine, U, a UID? UID? U, uh, IUD. 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 <laughs> Intrauterine. <laughs> Intrauterine device. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Did you get an IUD? I got one right now. <laughs> I have one way up my uterus right this second. <laughs> kind of hurts. Did uh, you get a DWI? <laughs> we're going to take a break. When we come back, it's uh, Bill. We'll be here doing the making of the things, and then we'll have Justin on. Justin, I know, wants to discuss, uh, I think he wants to, par uh, partially wants to discuss the new uh, Captain, or uh, what is it, Captain Marvel trailer that happened last night. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. I haven't either, so it might be just him talking about that, and then... Um, well, shoot, should we, I, we can't really watch it really quick. Well, the we could, we could do, we could pause and do it, it wouldn't be any big deal. 
Okay. We'll, we'll do that. Yeah, why not do that? All right, before all that, though, uh, Brian's going to play a song, and then we'll uh, get to those dudes. So, Brian, what do you got there? What do you got yeah. going? So, this uh, this band does not tell me much, but I like them. They are from Los Angeles. Uh, in the area where you usually put who they sound like, they put ourselves. I can't argue with that. They sound exactly like themselves. Weird. Uh, they're from L.A. You can find them at Hand Drawn Maps Official. The name of the band, of course, is Hand Drawn Maps. From their brand new album, Black Beach, here is the song Red and Blue. All right. I'm going to pause, save, and then let's watch this trailer. I don't know what a good link is, though. Uh, Captain Kipper just posted one in the oh, chat did room. He? All right. Yep. I can skip to the trailer in two seconds, one second, and go. I just started right in. Oh, this is going to make sound for you. Hold on. How do I do that so you don't have to hear it? Um, um, I'm tell you what. I will I will stop it at the subway. Okay. And I will turn off my sound and listen to your sound. All right. Hopefully it won't be too weird. Yep. Okay. Here we go. Go. So... Scrolls are the bad guys. <laughs> Good lord. And you're a Kree, a race of noble warriors. Heroes. Noble warrior heroes. Your life began the day it nearly ended. We found you. With no memory, we made you one of us. So you could live longer, stronger, superior. You were reborn. I keep having these memories. Something in my past is the key to all of this. You know how to fly this thing? We'll see. That's a yes or no question. Yes. Would you like to know what you really are? I think I had a life here. What are you telling me? You've come a long way. But you're not as strong as you think. This war is just the beginning. I'm not going to fight your war. I'm going to end it. You mean our infinity war? Aren't you cute? And what's your name, huh? What's you? I'll be back. All right. They did a really good job of making Samuel L. Jackson not look old. That's pretty impressive. Right. Yeah, totally. <laughs> wow. Um, All right. <clears throat> did you catch the name of the cat The cat on its tag? I couldn't tell, but I'm wondering oh, what, is that uh, a, is that a if Easter there's egg? a little Easter eggy kind of thing there. Might be. Yeah. All right, well, now we can reasonably talk about this when Justin comes on. <coughs> yeah. Okay, hold on to your butts, everybody. I'm going to... I'm going to... Oop, why isn't that working? Okay, we're going to start that up again. Is it working? I think so. Let me just double check. Yeah, it is. Okay, uh, here we go. Where are we? All right, here we go. Blot off excess with the tissue. If you have disturbed skin, medicated makeups are available. The smell and the taste are anything but pleasing. The Morning Stream. My bum hole hurts. All right, we're back, everybody. We're back. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, we got uh, we got people to talk to. That's right. <clears throat> For example, Bill Duran, maker extraordinaire, will be joining us shortly and telling us all about the fantastic world of making things. 
Yay! Which uh, we like to do with him, so I'm going to play this for him. Here you go. But Bill just isn't thinking about danger. No, he's not. Bill Duran from Punish <laughs> Props, welcome to the show. How are you, sir? I'm thinking about danger every moment I'm awake. Whoa. That... Far too much time around spinning blades mm. to not keep an eye out for danger. I could see that. <laughs> Uh, you uh, always around that kind of stuff, right? Like you know, there's always a saw blaring to the one side and a laser cutter to the left. Yep, just, it's just your life. Danger is my maiden name. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Danger. It's pretty good. You should change it. I like <laughs> it. Should, don't yeah, we? I don't mind is that. that better at all. than Alfred? Yeah, it's a lot better than Alfred. Uh, uh, hey, uh, let's talk about that. For example, Bill makes stuff. He comes on the show on Tuesdays. We talk about the things he's making. Gives you guys tips and tricks. Because we got a lot of, you know, cool nerds that uh, listen to the show and want to make stuff with their 3D printers or their hands or whatever it is they want to do. And so today, what have you brought us? Today I'm talking about making content specifically on Tumblr. Whoa. You heard about what's going down on Tumblr? Yeah. I'm... So wait, I can't do nudity on Tumblr now is what they're saying, right? Right. right. You're going to have to stick to just posting pictures of your butt on Twitter. Yeah. I'm going to lose so many likes <laughs> or so many follows or yeah. whatever you get on. I don't I have no idea. What yeah. do you get on Tumblr? <laughs> yeah. Tumblr, you get, I put comics on Tumblr, um, but a lot of people put pornography on Tumblr. They do, yeah. yeah. And so Tumblr decided that they're not having any of that anymore, and they're culling the the herd, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, I guess any posts that their robots designed are uh, not appropriate are being asked to be reviewed and taken down. I have a so couple I, of I have a couple of drawings ahead. where my dude might look a little phallic, and so I'm yeah. I'm concerned <laughs> I'm, I'm concerned my my some of my art may make uh, may may lose out on this robot. Uh, sweep so we'll see how it goes yeah um so obviously a lot of artists are uh and content makers over on tumblr are upset by this decision um i've seen a lot of people i know who use that platform a lot uh kind of scrambling to because people can go in and kind of uh clean up their tumblr page and get rid of posts i guess that are that are inappropriate um but also i've seen some really funny false promises or false uh not promises, false positives. There we go. Ah, there okay. you go. So people I know who make costumes will, are posting photos of, um, uh, let's say, them in a full costume, head to toe, not a not a whisper of skin showing, and even even that, the robot's like, I think that's dirty. You should probably take that down. Mm. A lot of fun uh, false promises. Is that happening uh, now? Like, is it already going? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. I wasn't sure if this was just announced and they were gonna do it. Or people are already starting to see their uh, their their business go away. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's all it's starting to go down, or at least people are posting screenshots or making fake screenshots. I don't know, yeah. but it's going down. People are scrambling. People who have been using that platform for a long, long time are scrambling. Mm. Uh, from my point of view, whenever I see, so I don't <clears> use <throat> Tumblr. Um, I have a Tumblr page. And about once a week, I'll get an email that says someone started following it. I don't know why they would. I don't post anything there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the, the when I see like something like this happen, I think, what's the lesson I can take away from this, right? Right. Because I am also a content creator. I just happen to dodge the bullet because I'm not on Tumblr and I'm not drawing uh, boobies <laughs> in my content. Mm -hmm. So something I learned from our mutual friend, Nicole, a lesson that she uh, instilled in me a long time ago is don't build your house on someone else's foundation. Mm. Mm. So sure. really what that means is don't build your entire career completely on a platform that you don't own or you don't have any control over. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you shouldn't use Tumblr, but it shouldn't be the only place where your work lives. Right. You have a website. You should have other stuff you have more control over so that you have more options. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to keep in mind when I see people right now scrambling. So, for example, all of my stuff goes up on YouTube. I know it sounds weird, but what if at one point YouTube is like, you know what? We just can't put ads on uh, prop and costume tutorial videos anymore. It upsets someone. Mm -hmm. I'm sure someone somewhere, some advertiser will get upset. That would make a big difference on my ability to use YouTube as my main platform for sharing my work 
That'll yeah, make a difference. And I would have yeah. to scramble. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a true yeah. true of any uh, any baskets where you got all your eggs, right? Like <laughs> right, exactly. Right. I was just going to use that exact same uh, analogy. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the same uh, thing is true of. That's why I never I never ended up using everybody in podcasting. All jumped on to uh, feed burner because it was an mm -hmm. easy way to deal with your RSS feeds. And I was always hesitant before Google bought it. I'm even more hesitant now because Google has a tendency to buy up a service, sort of half-ass it, and then get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And they'll do it pretty indiscriminately. Like, I really got to like and use their inbox email replacement uh, called Inbox for both uh, phones, tablets, and PC. And I used it constantly. It was my new way of getting my email. And they just announced, yeah, we're dropping that. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like, well, then why'd you yeah, start making yeah. it anyway then? What are you even freaking doing over there? So I, I'm always nervous about that. And as a result, I there, always feel like... an RSS thing too. Like they had an RSS reader. That's that, what I was just uh, saying, FeedBurner. I think you oh, were... that No, 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 not FeedBurner. No, one that one where you could read your RSS feeds all in one place. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, uh, just their news... What was it called? Um, <sighs> news reader? Google news, news reader? Google news it? reader. I think that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that I remember reading me yeah. off. Yeah, yeah, they dropped that. Like, oh, I had all my feeds in there, and and fortunately, they gave you a way to get them all out. I actually do use FeedBurner for a lot of my podcasts. No, and it's totally fine. I don't I don't begrudge anyone for using FeedBurner, but know, my stress but I know is exactly what you mean though. The minute yeah. it goes, what are you gonna do? Like you're kind of screwed. There's probably some ways to export to manual feeds, and you know, mm -hmm. but it sounds like a huge yeah. pain in the butt. So I've always manually controlled those. Uh, but I also host MP3s in various different places. Uh, right now, I use a lot of SoundCloud. If SoundCloud decided tomorrow to just end their existence or stop supporting long-form files, I, all those shows would just be—I mean, I'd have to—I have all the backups, and I'd have to go repost them somewhere. But it's a huge nightmare. So, what you're yep. describing, I think, could apply to just about anybody doing anything with any kind of front-facing internet inventory. You know, because it exactly, really is—it yeah. really is your inventory in a way. It's weird. Yeah. So, what, yeah. what you're what you've been describing though is some form of Plan B. Some sort of option for not, not if, but when something changes. I think a lot of people go, oh, they probably won't change. It's like, no, they'll change. Something will happen. Right. If if the if the Twitter or, or Tumblr uh, nipple apocalypse has proved anything, <laughs> platforms will find a reason to remove any content indiscriminately. Um, and you may get caught up in something, even even if you try to play it safe, right? Right. right. So you do need a plan B. And, so, and it's totally, by the way, for the record, totally uh, their prerogative to do this. Yep. It's just really important to remember that this isn't a public repository of protected, oh. hallowed ground. This is a company who gets to decide what they do with whatever they want. Yeah. And there's no not a First Amendment thing. No, this isn't no. like your no. your basic human rights. This is Tumblr owned by Yahoo, which yeah. which even in itself sounds stupid as I say it out loud. So yeah. So so I'll give you I'll use what we do as an example. Now we've done an okay job. It's not it's not the best, but we do have a a, a bit of a plan B. So everything that we publish, all of our YouTube videos, get published on, and embedded on our website, which is a blog. Uh, it's very SEO friendly. People actually find our videos through our website, uh, excuse me, pretty frequently compared to finding it directly through YouTube. So at least everything is referenced on our website. Now, if YouTube just evaporated tomorrow, right? We could take our videos, repost them all on Vimeo, all 650 of them, which makes me shudder to think about doing all that work. <laughs> We can put them up on Vimeo and then re-embed those videos on our website so that if people find a blog post about um, weathering with oil paints, they'll go there, all the relevant information is there, and then embedded video is there that they can watch. That would be a ton of work for my employees to do. <laughs> <laughs> but Already delegating. Well done. Yes. But we could do that, right? We, we At least our website wouldn't go down. The, all of the tags, all of the search uh, optimization we have are all all live on our website. So at least we have that. It's not a great plan B. What we should be doing is when I upload a video to YouTube, I should also upload it to Vimeo mm. and wherever. Have it uploaded in several different places, maybe, maybe not public, but if I need those, I can just turn them on and then re-embed them and I'm good to go. Mm -hmm. 
At least yeah. that's what the, that's what I that's what these sorts of things make me think of. Whenever any platform starts pulling content down en masse, I'm like, mm -hmm. I should probably start double publishing my videos somewhere else in case yeah. YouTube totally drops the ball. Like there's one, there's if, if, there's at one point you could say, well, in the case of Tumblr, it's like, okay, I kind of understand. You want to clean up your platform. There's a lot of really hardcore stuff on there. Mm -hmm. But then you get to the details where the devil always is. And the details is there's a lot of really artsy fartsy stuff that it involves nudity but is not pornography. Right. Are you going to pull those down? Probably. Because the robots mm -hmm. don't know the difference. It's just going mm -hmm. beep, boop, boop. I see a breast. I see delete, delete. Ah, yeah, ah. Too much skin. <laughs> I mean, there's already reports of like superhero images being removed. And um, yeah. what was the other thing? Oh, pictures of Jesus. So there's yeah. like, oh, right. Yes. Yeah. Jesus pictures where he's like on the cross or something with no shirt on. They're like, oh, beep, boop. Whoa. D does not compute and they delete him. <laughs> So it's it's just when you get in that nitty gritty, it's easier. Plus, it's harder to take stuff away than it is to give it. So in the case of yeah, YouTube, yeah. YouTube's never allowed this stuff. They've always curated it. Yeah. And so no one's freaking out over there because it was never there to begin with. But if Vimeo, which has its following, suddenly stopped having their little nudie bits, people would lose their minds because you're taking something away. And yep. if Tumblr, if Tumblr was smart, I think they should figure out a way to cordon the stuff off so people can still have their freaking stuff but just put it make it you know demarcate it give it its own red light district like just <laughs> get it out of the main view tumblr, and everything. tumblr after dark. yeah tumblr after dark there you go dot tumblr.com <laughs> <laughs> and then you have the whole argument about what art is some people think that hardcore porn yeah. is art and other people would say no it isn't this is and that's the whole point of art is nobody can decide yeah. which is what so it's a this is a complicated uh, hoo-ha is what this is it is and I, and I hear artists making these same arguments like yeah. well well how how is tumblr supposed to be able to differentiate and as the person who's trying to use that platform to make a living, you should bank on them not doing a good job of differentiating between what you might consider le your legitimate artwork for your career and what other people might consider, you know, uh, pornography. It's not up to you. It doesn't matter what you think or your opinion. It's up to Tumblr. And they, they'll make their decisions based on what they think is the best for them to continue to exist. Right. So as the creator, you need to keep that in mind and have you know have a, a plan B, a plan C, <laughs> have plan have plans upon plans. Yeah, that's a good idea. This is also you could apply this to like where your revenue model is coming from or where your uh, you know what technology you rely on. Like I, I can mm -hmm. I can today very happily say that the best drawing tool on the market is an Apple Pencil and an iPad Pro, but that could change with the next Studio Pro release. That could change mm -hmm. with whatever. I, Photoshop could still be the standard, but tomorrow a brand new thing could happen and you'll get left in the dust. It's like those people that wouldn't switch from PageMaker to Quark Express back in the day. <laughs> They, <laughs> right. they just got screwed, you know. Silly, silly people. So you just got to be flexible and fluid and willing to, yeah. to say, not just scoff at a new thing. Like this new TikTok app is annoying as hell to me, but there's something there and people are using it like crazy. So I don't know, maybe some content should go up on And like you, you just have to keep your mind open to this stuff and not, you know, get all old about it and say, yeah, <laughs> back in my day, it was Tumblr and porn and that's the best we could had. And, yeah. You know, it's, just, it's the sort of thing, too, where you might be finding success on that platform and not want to change or move away from it. Um, in fact, uh, Patreon, we can have a whole discussion about Patreon, but um, the better our Patreon campaign does, uh, the happier I am, but also the more nervous I am because the better it does, the more I rely on it. And Patreon has occasionally done made changes that have had a negative impact on how much money I make there. Right. So that's all something like I don't have a Patreon plan B. I should. Cause again, it's not if but when. Just when you're making plans, just think it's not if Patreon yeah. becomes not the place for me, but when. Yeah, when and will if it you, be? If you yeah. plan for when, then you'll you'll be okay. Yeah, but then there's those people who did the dumb thing of switching everything over to the because they got beta access to Kickstarter's oh, drip service. Drip. Drip, yeah. 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 And now they've said they're not doing that. 
So, right. so yeah. some people already tied a new wagon and threw the old wagon away, and then they're like, exactly. ah, no, keep your, you gotta keep your existing wagon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you keep, know. yeah. keep your wagon. Yeah. It goes back to the the eggs and baskets analogy. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly. If you got multiple eggs, spread them around. You yeah, know, yeah. or cook if them. You make only a nice one egg, though. You're screwed. Yeah. You make a nice little omelet thing or something. One <laughs> egg, one egg, ten baskets. That's what I. There do. you go. <laughs> one egg, ten <laughs> baskets. That's a that's a oh, terrible. It's twist. very messy. It's hard to separate. Yeah, I remember all the reaction videos people would post about uh, one egg, ten baskets. It was a, a <laughs> rough time. <laughs> can't show that on Tumblr. Anymore. No, Tumblr's no, all no, no, done with that. Uh, well, this is good. First great. Video. This is great advice. I think for all sorts of stuff, it applies kind of across the board um, yep. and uh, a, a worthy discussion, I believe. So well done. Uh, so, uh, Bill, any uh, final thoughts you want to leave with us? You usually have a little link or recommendation. I do. This is a video over on Tested, but uh, my friend Melissa makes 3D printed and molded and cast gauntlets. And oh, she brought oh. a bunch of them to Adam's shop to show off, and they are gorgeous. Oh, They're look so at these. Kidding. Look wow. at this. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What are these made of? Is that aluminum? So the, the originals are 3D printed. Um, believe they're printed on a like at shapeways maybe i don't know uh but then they get sanded and molded and cast so these are a task 16 urethane plastic but they're they're very flexible it's kind of like half plastic half rubber interesting yeah. wow yeah. can you wear them oh yeah they, they can and do okay. yeah and they're fully articulated she has put so much time into developing her design they're so cool. This is I really nifty. Yeah. They're really amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of want a pair. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at that. Um, yeah. her, her channel is called Luma Cluster, and uh, there are links in that in that tested video. I recommend everyone goes and follows uh, Melissa because she is like, she, what I love about what she's doing is that she's making a fashion statement. This isn't necessarily for a costume. Mm -hmm. she's, she's like adding shiny looking armored gauntlets as part of her, her they look outfit. good yeah they look good Every on her wear, yeah. Yeah. yeah and i i have a prediction that this is in, in some part gonna be some sort of weird fashion trend that i'm totally on board with i'm yeah totally for this this is cool really impressive yeah, I hope really they impressive. have uh whatever the hop dick or whatever you need so that you can still operate your phone while you're wearing them <laughs> oh geez yeah boy that'd be Awful if you couldn't poke your phone. How are you going to be able to take a selfie? Yeah. <laughs> but let me look at that. Like, so I'm, I'm, I fast forwarded pretty close to the end, and I'm watching Adam, you know, move his hand around. Like he, it's full control. Like he mm -hmm. has got. Oh yeah. 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 The way she was moving him too, she it looked like she could just do whatever she wanted. You know. Yeah. With, with the exception and of that. Oh, that's, that's the outside. Okay, so you could even have like the open the fingers open so mm -hmm. you can grip stuff if you plus need that to. material yeah. that's in there looks like you could probably you could the, the liner could be the conductive stuff if you wanted right right right, right. yeah so yeah, uh, you know what this reminds me i've just seen them all laid out on that table it's like i've been playing a lot of diablo 3 again <laughs> and it's like sure. looking at all these gloves that have dropped it's just they all yeah. have this unique yeah. style they're all very diablo the auction house the wow auction house right now yeah <laughs> it's they're similar they're similar gauntlets but they each have a different enchantment yeah. yeah, exactly. Some of them glow. Some of them uh, cause people some to explode. energy in those green ones right there. Yeah. Those are awesome. I love this. Everything about this is cool. Um, all right, so go check her out. Uh, this, of course, video is up on uh, Tested, the Adam yep. Savage website. His um, lamb chop sideburns are terrible. He should shave those. And uh, just a little side thought there. Uh, of course, if you, if you want to find Bill and more of Bill, he's over at PunishProps.com. And as always, all up on his YouTube channel, and other places where he'll find other baskets to put his eggs. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill Duran, everybody. Chin, uh, Chinbeard on Twitter. Take it easy. We'll see, see you later. Buddy. Bye, buddy. Bye, buddy. Oh, I hung up on everybody. Yeah, I didn't mean to hang up on you. That was uh, Yeah, funny. I was going to say, I see Bill still. <laughs> I hung up on you. I do. I hung up on Brian. There's a, there's a callback to a... Mm -hmm. a uh, an old standard. An old greatest hits. Yeah, it's the old... Uh, well, he used to cause that. The uh, oh Skype. Skype, you would you would hang up on me accidentally while you're hanging up on the guest. Yeah, Skype was stupid that way. I've lost Dibbit. Yeah. Well, who's who? We never really found him. These are their stories. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm terrible with names. It's uh, Justin Robert Young joining us now, all the way from Oakland, California. Hello, Justin. 
Hi, how are you guys? Ooh, you're I think quiet. Jimmy uses XSplit. Yeah, I think you use XSplit. <laughs> Look, chat room. Here's a quick advertisement for XSplit. Whoops. Where is it? There we go. <laughs> yeah, you got your. You're sending out your XSplit. Oh, now you're. Now I still see XSplit.com at the bottom. Working here. All right, the jury is expletive. And your uh, your volume's really low again for some reason. I think it changes every week. I don't know. How about now? How about oh, now? much oh, better? Geez. Much better. Go a little higher. A sounded better than B. Yeah. <laughs> you're totally fine now. Hi, hi, jury. Hi. Hey, what's going on, fam? Oh, uh, we miss we miss you, and uh, I don't know why, because we get you every week, so there's no reason to miss you, really. But it's uh, it's you nice wanna, to have I'm you on. I'm fine with that. Yeah, you're cool with that. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's good to be missed. Mm -hmm. I I agree. I think it's better to be missed you, than pissed. You always yeah, want to be missed. Better, better yeah. to be missed off than missed on. That's yeah, what I like. That's to what say. I you say never, too. Yeah. You, you never want somebody to say, "Oh, did you leave? I I guess I didn't notice." <laughs> yeah, you don't you don't want that. I think people would notice if you weren't here. So here's the deal. Uh, first of all, can you say the word uh, escape for me? Just out loud. Escape. Okay, you did it fine, chat room. What are you guys talking about? Because you prompted him. I, if in the heat of a quick sentence... He'll, he'll, he might stumble into an escape. Jan no, no, no. That, that's that's one of my that's one of my things. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll I'll throw a, an X an X into a, a, a escape. Okay, so it's while. like my it's like my both or wait. It's just your we got a little quirk right. here. Probably our dads did it and we picked it up from them or who knows yeah. where we got it. I totally get it. Uh, all right, so here's the deal. There are a number of things on the docket that we could talk about today. Yes. There are really two in particular I think are important. One okay. reactions to the Captain Marvel uh, trailer. Sure. It's way more uh, uh, Marvel uh, uh, the, the, what, what, cos cosmic universe than I thought it would be. Sure. Uh, and we can talk about that in a second. And then after that, I want to talk about real-time public uh, 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 witness tampering. I want to talk okay. about that. So, so, so uh, obsessing about the president's Twitter. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. So, we can, we can, we can do both. Uh, uh, but first, we're uh, we're going to finish what we started last week. Oh, oh for oh, Pete's geez. sake! All right. No. I'll, you know what? I'm going to cop to it. I we got a, we got a few a little bit of feedback saying, "Oh no, it is totally mum, and it's it's not ma'am, and it doesn't just sound like mum." Blah 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 from some people, and I was thinking, oh, all right, well, look at this. My it looks like I'm doing all right because I'm going into it. Thought, oh, I don't know. It turns out Justin's right, and we were wrong. And most of the Europeans uh, or the British folks have weighed in and said this is a Scottish accent. First of all, it's also very common for that to sound like mum. It's life. It's like lieutenant. It's really lieutenant, but they say it weird, and that's just the way it is. And so I would like to publicly now on the show acknowledge. The correctness of Justin Robert Young and his presentation of the facts, and my incorrectness, and so you got it right. Well done. Yeah. Okay, Jerry was not only right, but he was super right. He was okay. super right. I, super right. There we go. It's funny. I texted a friend, uh, 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 Will Harris. Oh yeah, well and, I love uh, Will Harris. I, He's great. I just I just texted him and I said, "Have you seen Bodyguard?" And he just texted back, "Ma'am." Ah. <laughs> <laughs> aware okay. aware yeah, of this yeah. conversation yeah uh, he even went so far as to say that anybody who hears mum has uh, a, a freudian issues yeah he's a uh, he, will listens to this show every day and uh is a, has always been really great that way i don't know why i didn't think of him as the first person we should have contacted like he would totally know he's not just british he's really smart not that the rest of you aren't, yeah. but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like you he know is. stuff. But I want I wanted to uh, <laughs> I just I wanted to to uh, put that in there. Okay, so uh, uh, then also when is uh, Nerdtacular? <laughs> 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 so I knew you were gonna do this. Um, uh, so there, it's very loosely uh, this official idea. announcement <laughs> being made right now. Let everybody know. Please tweet it out. Official announcement. Nertacular's back. Right? Wait, well, yes I did no. that. So I mentioned it on the show before. So people have heard that. Uh, 2020 is our current thinking because that sounds like a fun, like big year to do it. Uh, potentially a great year if something cool happens that November. But anyway, uh, uh, so yeah, we don't. But I don't know anything else. There's nothing else to know. It's just except real... for the fact that it's definitely happening. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we're gonna do it for sure. It doesn't guarantee a, a, a comeback to the yearly thing. We're gonna TMS Vegas is still here for that. 
um, which is happening in April, and Brian and I are working mm-hmm. on stuff for that, so stay tuned for that as well. But, yeah, 2020, big bash. There, there will be a thing that happens that... Uh, uh, bears a more than passing resemblance to Nerdtacular. Oh yeah, it'll probably be called Nerdtacular. I'm sure. Um, like okay. it'll straight up be a Nerdtacular so event. We are officially announcing Nerdtacular is coming back in 2020. And it will. There will be a Nerdtacular in 2020. Yes, that's yeah. what I'm willing to coming say. Back yearly forever. <laughs> <laughs> if I, if I, and 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 all you know, all like my contract states, all terms uh, or all things are you know subject to change. But uh, but that's currently the the plan and and we're and there's some excitement about it so we'll see we'll see i don't know you're invited you get to come Mm -hmm. it'll be fine oh i've I've been saying nertacular's coming back since you canceled nertacular so (laughs) i'm just very excited that i'm two and oh so far so okay we've done the only the only person who was who was saying that nertacular probably wasn't coming back was scott all the rest of us yeah i was the only one i was the only one but as, a, as a permanent yearly staple, I, that's that's not necessarily in the that's cards. But for sure, as we've heard right now, yeah. confirmed uh-huh. yearly starting in twenty twenty. Wow, okay. this is <laughs> this news cycle is really <laughs> jacked up. All right, so forget about all that, Captain Marvel. Yeah. What do you think? Okay, uh, you pretty- know it, it's it's it, 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 it's a very very weird and and pressure filled spot for Captain Marvel to be. This is the first female hero. Uh, that they have done that has been uh, had their own movie dedicated to them so yeah. mm-hmm. a gigantic pivot point for the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe we're currently in the middle I mean it will be the two one of the two movies that come out that, that come out in between uh, uh, the the Infinity Wars the one of which was kind of a very fun light hearted kind of thing this seems like there will be more of a mythological heavy lifting that plays into uh, uh, Infinity War, if not connecting almost directly to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it's also the the the, the beginning of uh, one of my favorite villains of all time, which is the Skrulls. Uh, yeah. you know, the idea of, of shape-shifting, the, the shape-shifting Skrulls were always my favorite in the comic. Uh, I think that there's a million different things you can do, it, do with it storytelling-wise. So with all that being said, man, Marvel's got a lot of faith in Brie Larson. They got a lot of faith in this movie. Uh, I <sighs> there it's was a... not a lot in the trailer that I think we haven't seen before. Yeah, I think we've kind of seen a million origin stories. At least at the, right. I mean, at least the beats. Right. Like the beats we've seen before. Yes, yes. And, we haven't and... seen these scenes before, but the no, right. no, exactly, yeah. and, and, mm-hmm. and so. And I know how good Brie Larson is as an actress, so I don't want to hold any of the moments in the trailer as like, oh, well, this is the final word on right. on her performance. But uh, for me, both trailers, the second one I thought was a little bit better. Uh, was what they were very wait and see in that like the first one felt almost more like a trailer for where Marvel. And we finally put a lady in a movie. <laughs> Look, it's a movie about a lady who's who's not gonna take this anymore, and she's gonna she's gonna get everybody for doing her wrong. Yeah, right. She it punched an old sucks. lady, and you might think she's a scroll, but we won't tell you in that trailer, and it'll be controversial because she punched a lady. But, yes, but now uh, we know. I, I, I do like. No, no, it. She's crazy. She's got she's got blue blood trickling out of her mouth. No, 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 not that. I'm talking about the old lady she punches on the oh, bus. Oh, the old lady. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. When she did that in the first so, trailer, there was a lot of outcry going. How how c- kind of hero punches an old lady? I'm like, <laughs> the old lady is not an old lady. Okay, she's a scroll. She's a scroll. Come on, yeah. Nerd. She's a man, baby. She's a man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, I I was not. I, I guess I didn't. I wasn't able to put hooks into it in the same way that some of the best Marvel trailers have have done. You know, it's either like showing something amazing that I have never seen before, uh, uh, or just being kind of a work of art in and of itself, mm-hmm. like that first Guardians trailer or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was neither one of those. But at this point, literally, Marvel could just you know, uh, uh, show a, a, a title card and have Kevin Feige just say, come see my movie. Mm. And I would be like, sure, where's the button? Exactly. Hit right now to buy a ticket. Yeah. Like, you know how this works. Yeah. You know that I'm not, this is, this is not a choice. I'm, right. I'm, I'm in it forever. Yeah. We're you know, in it. The thing. I, 
I was surprised. I mean, I knew this was going to be, we, we'd been hearing that it, it was going to be scroll based as kind of the main enemy or the main enemy group for a while. It still surprises me because I thought scrolls were introduced with the Fantastic Four and ownership of Fantastic Four properties didn't change over until just recently. Yeah. So I think that they're, it's interesting. I, I, I don't know the, the older. Yeah, I, I don't know the behind the scenes on everything, but if I were to guess, Marvel has been, specifically as they've charted out their next phase, they've mm -hmm. been, for the last few years, very willing to just kind of make deals mm -hmm. to get some of their IP, Spider-Man probably being the biggest example. Obviously, Fox was in disarray even before it got sold. It is now sold, you know, pending... Yeah whatever final regulations uh so at the very least i think there was probably some contingency to be like all right you technically like yeah we can both have quicksilver but we can't call our quicksilver a mutant and yeah there's probably some legal arrangement where we can have scrolls but they can't say they're from some planet right, uh, right. You, know, they, you know and and so they, they I, I don't know. I, I would I would guess oh. there was some deal made. Mm. I am sci-fi both under Lightning Shadow and I am sci-fi clear a couple things up. They did a deal uh, scrolls for an X-Man TV show, mm. which is interesting. I'll have to look that up. And then only Super Scroll was 100% under the Fantastic Four license. So yeah, Scrolls I, I, I as think, a, I think it was, was it was always more of a thing that Marvel didn't want to fight about it. Yeah. Uh, uh, sure. That if they weren't going to go Scrolls are such a rad part of uh, uh, the Marvel Cinematic or the Marvel Universe in general, that if they're not going to build a whole story and probably a multi movie kind of arc around the scrolls, then, you know, why? I don't know. We can just invent some other weird faced thing. And that's what they did with the yeah. Chitari. Chitari. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah that, that's I true. Because those would have been scrolls then, probably. Um, but but the, 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 the thing, okay, this is what I think. I could be totally wrong. But everything that I am sci-fi and those guys say in the chat is probably true. But also the deal did go through during production. It's possible that they've... I, I don't know what they could have oh, done. Oh, that they just... Uh, they could right. just no, now be well, more open about it. something else in place? Well, if, I, don't, if, I don't mean entirely. I just think maybe they were real... Maybe they were real... Uh, careful with the wording or the whatever, and now they don't care. And in ADR sessions, they fixed a bunch of stuff where who cares if we call them scrolls because now we own it all again. I'm like, I don't know. It's possible, is all I'm saying. Because now that's yeah, theirs. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, knowing how Marvel has worked and, and also like where their production schedule is, like there is a high likelihood that the Avengers after this one, after Infinity War, is in the scripting stage mm -mm. you know like that that there are like they they run this little writers you know commune kind of like barton fink where, <laughs> where they just churn out like constant just general ideas of like that's where guardians came from is that they just have these writers that they just keep having right you know basic ideas right and right. then they'll bring those basic ideas to the writer directors that want to work on them and then they'll kind of make them their own and rewrite them and then they'll rewrite them and rewrite them but they're very much in that pixar mold of like every script lives for four years before they start you know working on it uh sure you know, they, they, they they love plussing and plussing and plussing and plussing and plussing what'll be interesting is i, I think captain marvel is a much lesser known property for a lot of people uh, i'd put her in the guardians of the galaxy era maybe a little bit not era, but uh, zone of like mainstream understanding of who that character is, I think is on the low side. Um, I don't think, I think Marvel's proven again and again, that's not a barrier for them. They can, they can totally make that work. Um, I'm just surprised it's so cosmic. I expected, I don't know what I expected. I didn't expect mm -hmm. space in it and that's fine. I'm cool with it. Let's bring on the space. Well, I mean, it, it's going to connect directly with uh, uh guardians right because the the the, the Kree were a big part of guardians and mm -hmm. she's a Kree and mm -hmm. and right and and korath uh, is one of her uh one of her teammates so they're not royal guard but um like you basically see him in a real quick shot in that in that thing mm -hmm. the guy who goes uh star lord who mm -hmm. yeah yeah 
Correct. Uh, the pursuer. And I like so, Brie yeah. Larson a lot. I'm very excited to see what she does with a role like this. I'll, she, I'll say the, 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 the biggest thing is that, man, that, that de-aging on Sam Jackson is right? Like, yeah. It's tight, like, man. It's really good. I'll say, it actually makes me hate Rogue One more <laughs> that they had to make that, that bizarre uh, plastic golem of, uh, mm-hmm. of Tarkin. Uh, and uh, Grand Moff Tarkin, yeah. where it's like, like just got get those guys. Yeah. Like they made him look like 1992 Samuel L. Jackson from every angle in in moving, and he's like doing dialogue and telling jokes, and it's like, like what? How is that good? Yeah. And uh, you know they can't get the mustache off of uh, uh, Henry Cavill without making his uh, a lip quiver like a weirdo. <laughs> Yeah, like I don't know who I don't know what they're doing over there, but they've been honing it for a while, and uh, that looks great. Like Sam Jackson in the '90s. In fact, you want to go back and find a picture of him, like from let's see, what movie would it be? I maybe. mean, you, you'd be thinking maybe Die Hard Three or Yeah, Die no, Hard's yeah. a good one. Before Die, that, Die Hard's that'd a good be one. For uh, early '90s. Yeah, it would have been right before Pulp Fiction stuff, is what I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, but his glasses, like his his glasses wearing character in that Die Hard movie, that's what this dude looks like. Yeah. Like they have they have just magically done a thing. And what's funny is, didn't he do this for like the Triple X movie where he played a younger version of himself and part of it at least, or maybe one of the sequels or something? It may have been oh, was it Triple X know. or was it um, what was it? Kingsman or something, but it was something it was like something that. Recent, and he, right? Yeah, yeah. recent ish, and he does, and it didn't work like this. Like it looks stupid, and mm-hmm. this looks really good. Like, mm-hmm. like I, super uh, good. All I know about his role in Triple X, uh, the first Triple X movie I loved. I've not seen the sequels yet. Uh, I mean, I saw the Ice Cube sequel, but not the the new version. Yeah, that one of my favorite lines in movie history is for whatever reason, uh, Sam Jackson is communicating with Vin Diesel as Triple X at the end. And uh, tells him, you passed the test, the Gibbons test. <laughs> and his last name is Gibbons, but it's never like a big thing. And like nobody's like, ah, oh, Gibbons, the best. Gibbons, Gibbons is the, the <laughs> high. Uh, uh, but it's like just a random, I don't know, for whatever reason, that, that, that still delights me as a 35-year-old man from the first moment I saw it in the theater of, you passed the test, the Gibbons The Gibbons test. test. You know what? I'm a. I actually really like the second one, the Ice Cube one. I shouldn't, but I do. I think that one's great. Ice Cube is a really underrated actor. Like I agree. He's, he's uh, really uh, fun to watch. Yep. And all his everything he does now, or unless, I don't know what he's done lately, but it's always these dumb family movies and stuff. Although those barbershop movies are pretty good, at least the first one, and I think the newer one's pretty good. But mm. yeah, but, I agree. I I would like. He wound up going. He, he was never really able to keep a career as a straight action guy yeah. because he's always yeah. been funny. Mm-hmm. So it's like it went from straight action to comedy action. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the family movies hit. And for whatever reason, <laughs> Ice Cube, I mean, Jesus, some of his solo albums after he left NWA are some of my favorite rap albums of all time. Yeah. But oh, my God, do they not hold up? I mean, like <laughs> oh, there, are, no. there are things said that uh, 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 you know, are of their era, and they are very much uh, uh, from a a uh, 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 an angry perspective from uh, an artist who is portraying the the, the pain of uh, of the people that were listening. Mm-hmm. And uh, man, there's uh yeah, Woo. yeah, there's some stuff in there. I was re- I was listening not long ago to where is it? What's that album called? Uh, shoot. America's Most Wanted and Death Certificate are probably the best solo albums. But then he had really, really great stuff in the in the late nineties with like uh, West Side Connection. Yeah. And uh... it's real good stuff. But the one I heard, I don't remember which one it was. But it was lyrically, you're like, oh, okay. Well, we're further. We're not there. That we're not there now. <laughs> well, look, it, it was it was of its era. Yeah. We've, we've uh, the, the the surest sign of 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 of, of uh, well, I mean, what I I don't think that there's there could be a rap album that would say a lot of the same kind of stuff that Ice Cube said there. The the interesting thing is that it's Ice Cube. It's you know, uh, are, are we there yet? Star Ice Cube. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it's like, oh, you're the same one who did Black Korea, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. By the way, he's uh, exact almost exactly my age. 
and uh, that's weird to think about for some reason. Uh, uh, Dab Hattie, wait, it says No Vaseline is the greatest song ever. I, again, I prefaced all this by saying that they're my favorite rap album. They're some of my favorite rap albums of all time. Right. I'm just saying that they are they are of their era. Yeah. They, they are they're very much of their era. No Vaseline probably holds up the best. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like it, it is a diss track. And if there's one thing that we have continued to progress in, in the world of rap and hip hop, it is that diss tracks have only become more are more ornate and more investigative as uh, uh you know 2018 brought us uh, uh the world's greatest detective pusha t unearthing yeah. that break had a, ch- a secret child yeah <laughs> but the fact that he's in you know he's the star of are we there yet and the follow-up yeah. are we done yet and uh movies like uh lottery ticket and fast or see first sunday there's a few others in here i saw him in ghost of mars for don't we see that for film sack i think we did yes um yeah. it's just an odd turn right because those early days boys oh, in the look, hood look, trespass uh, you know ice cube is one of the most remarkable uh, uh artists of his generation in my opinion uh he has he has uh been a, a tremendous example of seizing production and making production your own, owning of uh, 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 the means of getting your own vehicles out there. He's always been a producer on his own stuff. It's part of the reason why he left NWA was because he didn't want to just be another artist that was getting screwed on their deal. He wanted to get a better deal with better, more, uh, uh, better terms. And that dude has made a great living understanding where the money is mm-hmm. and and going to it and and while remaining Ice Cube. Yeah, I mean he still shows up and he's still right. Ice Cube. Yeah. and you're like. You know, I I think he would still. I mean, he still performs. You yeah. know, I think he played Coachella not too long ago. So it's like, uh, uh, that's that, that's amazing. It, it, he he really has been able to uh, uh, have it all. Yeah. I, I have nothing. If there's anybody who takes what I am saying for Ice Cube disrespect, you are you are mishearing me deliberately. Ice yeah. Cube is one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. There's nothing wrong with Ice Cube. I'm a huge yeah. fan. Well, we're out of time. We can't talk about emails today or about Twitter from the president. I'm sorry. Oh, are you sure? Yeah, I'm positive. You love talking about. Wait, no. no you, uh, 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 Scott. Yeah. Scott, did, did you know that the president has a Twitter now? Yeah, he's got a Twitter. What? Yeah, and he tampers with witnesses via his Twitter. Uh, Justin Yar Young on Twitter. Uh, you can also find him at the Night Attack show. Is there anything else you want to pimp or pump this week? Uh, yes, yeah, stickers or DIAF. Uh, uh, we're getting in our Night Attack button pack. Uh, that is 10 buttons uh, with inside jokes from Night Attack. If you like that show, you're really going to love it. Uh, super cheap, too. 10 bucks, and they're shipping this week, as well as our Death to Mayo enamel pins. Oh. You will never be able to show off uh, 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 better that you believe that mayo is the devil's ejaculate uh, uh, <laughs> until you go ahead and get the <laughs> Death to Mayo pin. Enamel pin from stickers or DIAF. I need to do a sticker of a of a mayo themed sticker for your next set. I think I'm going to do that. Let's, All right, we'll talk. That's fine. Justin Robert Young, everybody, Bye. take it easy. See you. <laughs> uh, the bottom line of that Trump thing is he tampers with witnesses via Twitter, literally. Yeah, he did it yesterday. Um, All right, we're going to now exit the building. Uh, We're going to do it, though, in style because that's how we do things. Actually, I'm not really. I'm just going to tell you what you have to do to get a hold of us and find things on the site and everything. Go to uh, frogpants.com slash TMS. There's links to everything there, including our Patreon. We'd love your support there as well. Don't forget to find uh, us on Twitter, Morningstream, Scott Johnson, Coverville, and email us, themorningstream at gmail.com. Got some emails lined up for tomorrow. We'll read those. we got recommendals and Tom tomorrow. All the fun Wednesday business. And everything, and everything. Yeah, that's okay. everything. That's everything. You got music? What do you got over there? I got a request. Yeah. Is that good? Will that work? Yeah. That, uh, all right. Yeah. Okay. All right. You know. Uh, Andy wrote in and said, yo, Scott and Brian, yo, uh, today, after years of struggling and failing to lose weight, I'm throwing in the towel and having gastric bypass surgery. Oh. I wanted a little something to make me smile as I convalesce. Any day is fine, as I've got plenty of time off work to be in the Tadpole Live, something I could never do with my work schedule. Love the show, though. Andy, P.S. Uh, and blah, blah, blah. What he said, if that song is not available, it's available and we're playing it. That's the deal. Nice. I don't know who Andy is in the chat room, because I don't think he's in there just as Andy. And he didn't say Andy. what his... Yeah, usually you guys will tell us what your Tadpole name is, but yeah, I don't know who that would be. Well, hopefully you're, you're recovering well and... Um, uh, and, and convalescing so good for mm. you and, and feel better and hope this works out how do you like that uh, word by the way do you like the word convalesce 
You fan of I it? I kind of do. Yeah, I hate Convalesce. it. Sounds like a really, really, really old people thing to say. It sounds well. It does. It's totally old, but it's, but it sounds so much better than lay in bed and watch The Price Is Right <laughs> drinking chicken soup. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. No, you're right. There need, we need a word, and this is it. I get, Boss, I can't come into work today. I've got to convalesce. Yeah. Oh God. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Take as much time as you need. <laughs> it's better. Yeah. You're yeah. right. I'll, I'll, I'm going to allow this word back into my vernacular. It's fine. <laughs> uh, all right. And you wanted to hear Thunderstruck by the Steven Seagulls. By God, I can't argue with that. These guys are, oh, shoot, they're Finnish, I think. I wish I would have had this information in front of me. Oh, ah, Finnish. Um, wee wee. Oh, that's not, they are a Finnish country band that does bluegrass versions of well-known rock and metal songs. Um uh man youtube has just been massive for these guys like they've got covers of um acdc led zeppelin um iron maiden they do a great cover run to the hills anyway these guys are great go check them out especially on youtube uh where you get the visuals to go along with the sound this is their song thunderstruck from their 2015 album farm machine here's steven seagulls this show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. I'm f- screwed. <laughs> <laughs>